Hi and welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. A few videos ago we made a really cool weekender size quilted tote bag. It had a tie top on it. I promised you we were going to do a zipper version. That's what we're going to do today. So here is the bag. It is absolutely adorable. I've got these regular handles on it just like we did on our other one. But for this one, I thought it would also be fun to add this adjustable cross body bag. So we have some fun gold hardware on the sides. We've got an adjustable strap so that you can kind of do a cross body version. I also added pockets to the front and to the back. And then I have these cute little side pockets as well. So four pockets just on the outside of the bag, and then there's an inside pocket too. Plus there's a ton of room in this bag, so it's the perfect weekend bag. So I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. If you're ready to join me, let's go ahead and get sewing. So here are all the supplies that you're gonna need to make this bag. Now it kind of looks like a lot and there are a lot of pieces, but that doesn't mean that it's a difficult bag to make. And since there are so many pieces, I'm not gonna go over all of it here. I'm just going to let you know that in the description box below this video, so just click the show more link down there, there will be exact cutting measurements for all of the pieces. Um, you are gonna want some fun outside fabric, some accent fabric. I have a couple different pocket fabrics. I've got some lining fabric, and then I am going to be using this Bossel um, fusible foam. This is double-sided fusible foam. And it just looks like this. This is fusible on both sides, which makes it really nice um, and handy for projects like this. You're also gonna want some cotton webbing. So I just have some pieces here of some white cotton webbing. This is just a cotton. And then I do have some hardware that you're gonna need um, for the straps of this bag as well. But like I said, everything will be mentioned in the description box below the video. Other than your basic sewing supplies, that's pretty much all you're gonna need for this project. So let's go ahead and get started sewing. So we're gonna start out with some of the easier pieces. This is the inner pocket, and then these are just the little side tabs, and I just like to make these to get them out of the way. So we're gonna take our little side tab piece here, and we're going to press in the ends by one quarter of an inch, and then we're gonna fold it in half and press again, and then I'm just gonna run a stitch line about one eighth inch in um, from either side. You can leave your edges raw down here, and we are going to make two of those. So here are my two little finished pieces. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my two D-rings here. And I like to just put them on there right now. Um, you're gonna just fold those in half like that. And then I'm just gonna take a little wonder clip and stick them on the side there. And then that way I can set those aside, but they're ready to go and I don't forget to put my D-ring on or anything like that because I have done that before. <laughs> So I just like to kind of prepare those in advance. So those can just be set aside now. And now we're gonna work on our inside pocket. So we should have a fabric piece that looks like this. We're gonna fold it in half, right sides together, like this. And I'm gonna sew up both sides and then back towards this center. And I'm just gonna leave about two inches open right here so that we can turn our pocket right side out. And I will backstitch at this stop and start point. All right, so here is our finished pocket. And then I'm just going to take these corner pieces and just trim those off. Just makes it turn out just a little bit neater. And then we can go ahead and turn our pocket right side out. And then for this part, I like to use my little point turner here. And these are actually by Modern American Vintage. And I have three tools. I've got a point turner, a hair marker for um, making quilt marks. And then I also have a seam ripper. And they're not only beautiful, but they work really well. And I just love having pretty things in my sewing room. So now I can just use this to kind of turn out that point like that. And it just does a really nice job. Now I'm gonna take this over to my ironing board. I will press it so it's nice and flat. And then I'm not gonna worry about closing up this opening yet. I'm just going to press it in by a quarter of an inch and it should just kind of naturally lay that way. Um, but I'm just gonna press this. I am going to take it back over to my sewing machine and run a top stitch along this folded edge, the fold without the opening in it, just to kind of finish it off. The rest we'll get when we attach it to the lining of our bag. All right, I'm not sure if you can see that or not because I used white thread, but there is just a little top stitch right along the top edge of our pocket. And then my opening is just open down here. I've just pressed it in. And so we can go ahead and set all of this aside. And next we're going to work on our pockets. And so this is one of my side pockets. And so I've just got my piece of fabric here. I've got my NR foam stabilizer, and then I have a little piece of binding on the top. The binding is actually optional. You don't have to use it but you can, and I think it just gives a little bit of extra pop to the bag. So we're gonna take our fabric, this is wrong side up, so here's the right side. We're gonna place our foam down here, and as you can see, it's about a quarter of an inch shorter all the way around. And then we're going to lay this 
top edge down. I'm just gonna take this over to my ironing board and I'm gonna press. Since this is double-sided fusible, I'm going to press it on one side and then I'm gonna press it on the other side to adhere it to both sides. Okay, and now you can tell it's fused on both sides, so it's not coming apart. I'm gonna now take this over to my sewing machine and I can do whatever quilting on here I want. Since it is fusible, technically you don't have to quilt, but it definitely um, helps everything stay in place better and it also kind of gives it a nice finished look. So I'm probably just gonna run some straight line quilting on it. You could free motion quilt this however you like. When I'm done doing that, I'm going to run a 1 8 inch top stitch all the way around the outside edge here. And I like to do that because it just keeps these edges nice and secure. And when we're assembling our bag, we don't have any um, you know, fabric that might get caught up. And once we're done with that, we're gonna go ahead and add the binding and I'll show you all of those steps next. So here is our finished little pocket and I think it just looks really cute. Our next thing to do is just to add some binding and like I said, this edge is already folded so it's technically finished. I just think the binding gives it a little extra pop. So I'm just gonna line that binding up on this top edge here and if you like, you can put a couple clips just to hold it in place. We're gonna take this to our sewing machine and sew right along this top edge using a quarter inch seam allowance. So we've attached our binding, now we just need to fold it up and you can press this or you can just finger press this and then flip it over to the back side and then you're going to just fold this down so that it kind of meets the top of your pocket. And then we're gonna fold that over to the back side and I'll usually just stick a couple clips on there just to hold it in place. And then we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and again, we're gonna sew right along this edge using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. And here's our finished pocket. As you can see, we've got our binding attached to both sides. And then now you can choose which side you prefer, either the side where we uh, initially sewed it on or the back side where you can kind of see the stitching along the binding. It doesn't matter, totally personal preference. And we don't need to worry about the raw edges because that will all get taken care of when we assemble our bag. So we have a couple of these pockets to make. This is one of the front pockets. And just to save time, I've already made the other one. So I've got two front pockets. I also have two side pockets that I prepared in the exact same way. And this one though, I thought would be kind of cute if we folded down the top edge. So I prepared my pocket the same way and then I've just taken it and folded it down by just about an inch or so. And I just try and make them both about the same. I'm gonna go ahead and just clip those in place there. And then you can take this over to your sewing machine and just sew down this side. And if you like, you can kind of stitch in the ditch right along this edge as well. I did that, this little binding kind of still sticks up, but it helps keep the pocket from this part from kind of coming up. And so I just thought that was a cute little addition. So I'm gonna do that for our side pocket. So I've got the two front pockets, the two side pockets, and then I've also prepared the two side panels um, using the exact same technique. So I just placed a lining fabric right side down, placed my uh, foam in between, and then placed an outside panel right side up. I pressed it together and then just stitched it how I liked. And then again, I ran a 1 8 inch stitch all the way around the edge. And I just did that to save time because you're preparing all of these things the exact same way. And then I also prepared our zipper strips as well. So an outside panel followed by foam, followed by a lining panel. Again, I quilted it and then I still did my 1 8 of an inch top stitch all the way around. And so I've made two of those panels and I just did all this ahead of time because really you're preparing them the exact same way. So just follow the instructions for that first pocket. So I prepared two of the zipper panels. I prepared two of the outside panels with the lining and the outside. I've prepared two side pockets and I've prepared a front and back pocket. Now that we've prepared the quilted pieces that we need, we're going to go ahead and work on the zipper section. And so I have just placed one of my zipper panels on the top and bottom of a 23 inch long zipper. Now, if I had a longer zipper, I would use it. This just happens to be the longest one I have right now that matches my project. So if you can get a longer zipper, I would go for it. I'm gonna go ahead and work around this one and I just need to be careful that I don't hit this metal uh, stopper here or the metal stoppers down at this end. So we're gonna go ahead and just make sure I have a fabric that is um, directional. So I'm going to make sure that is going um, the correct direction and I think that looks good. I'm gonna take my zipper with my tab over here on the left side, and I'm gonna place it right side down on top of one of these panels. And I'm actually going to scoot it down so that my metal is just in line with this. That way hopefully I won't sew over that later when we're doing 
other things. Next, I'm just going to kind of pin it in place just to hold all these layers together while we go. And this is why it's also kind of handy to have top stitched around your layers because that way you can kind of make sure that you're getting them all in there. And then for this top starter, I'm just gonna pull my zipper out of the way for just a little bit. Once I get down to that, then I can push it back out of my way, but it just makes it a lot easier. So now I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and I'm just gonna sew as close as I can to these zipper teeth all the way down this edge. All right, now we've got it all nice and sewed down. I'm going to just press it so that the zipper is flat. So I'm pressing it towards my lining. And this is where having the um, foam not going all the way to the edge is gonna really help reduce some of that bulk. So I'm gonna press that down with my iron. Now I'm gonna take this over to my sewing machine and just top stitch right along this edge to kind of finish it off. Now one thing you might notice is that I added this zipper using my quarter inch foot. You're welcome to use a zipper foot if you prefer. And I just want to make sure that you know you can still make these projects even though you don't have specialty feet for your machine. All right, here is our finished panel. And so we've just gone ahead and top stitched that one. And then now we just need to add this one to it. So I'm going to just take this one and lay it on top, right sides down. I'm gonna line up these side edges here and again, I'm just going to pin it in place. And then I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and again, add this side the exact same way, stitching all the way down as close to the zipper teeth as I can get. Um, and then when I'm done, I'll flip it open and top stitch that edge as well. Okay, and here's what our zipper panel should look like. As you can see, it's nice and finished and your zipper kind of covers up those raw edges. I got off a little bit on mine, but it's okay. Um, and I did wanna show you that that zipper just lays flat right there. Now we can go ahead and cut off our extra bits here. So now that we're done with our zipper portion, we just wanna measure it and just make sure that it's measuring 24 inches and we should be good to go. The next thing to do is to add our side panels and our little um, tabs here. And so what we're gonna do is just take one of your edges and then grab one of your panels. And I'm just gonna make sure mine is, my fabric is going right side up. And then you're gonna take one of your side tabs and we're just going to center that right here over the zipper and clip it in place. Now we can place this right side down on top of there and clip it in place. Just gonna grab a couple more clips just to hold everything nice and neat. Now, because we have our zipper on this side, I'm actually gonna go ahead and pull it out of the way. I'm gonna take this to my showing machine and just do a couple stitches back and forth right here just to hold it so that this doesn't come apart while we're sewing. All right, so I just added a little stitch just so that it won't fall apart. And now I can just center my Little side tab, just like that. Pin it in place and then grab my side panel and layer that on top. So here is what our panel looks like now. We just have one more step. I'm going to take two little pieces of binding from our lining fabric and I'm going to place it right on this edge, right side down and clip that in place. Just add all these layers together. And then I'm gonna repeat that on this side as well. Next, we're gonna take this to our sewing machine and sew right down this edge using a one quarter of an inch seam allowance. So here's one of our edges. We've got our binding sewn on. So we can just kind of finger press that up like that and then we're going to open it up. And you wanna make sure that your clip is facing towards your zipper. So if you need to pin that in place, we can flip this over. And this is going to be a lot of fabric to work with. So just take your time. We're just going to press that binding towards your zipper and then carefully fold it under about, I don't know, I think that's about a little more than a quarter of an inch or so. Okay, and then you can kind of press that and then we're just gonna take this to the machine and stitch right along that edge and that's gonna cover up all of this bulk that we have in here. All right, here is our finished side panel. And as you can see, we've got a nicely finished inside with that little piece of binding there. And then of course it ran an extra stitch right along this top, which will help keep this flapped in the correct direction. So I'm just gonna take my rotary trimmer and trim off any excess binding that I had on that edge. So this panel is completely done. We're ready to move on the next step. And we are going to just be adding our side pockets to this side panel. So you're just gonna take one of your side pockets and just line it up raw edges lined up just like that. And then I'm just going to pin this in place and take it over to my sewing machine and just run kind of a basting stitch around all three sides just to hold it in place. That way when we go to assemble our bag, 
uh, we don't have any pieces kind of flopping around on us. All right, so our side panel here is done. We've got our zipper installed, our little tabs, our side pockets are attached, and then we have our inside binding on. Now we're ready to move on to the outside portion of our bag. So now we're ready to assemble the outside panels of our bag and we've got a bottom piece and then two top pieces and this is gonna get folded in half. So this will be the top of your bag and this will be the top of your bag. So if you have directional print, make sure that it is facing the top this way and the top this way so that it's going the right way when we're all done here. We're gonna take this, lay it right side down on top of this panel and add it using a quarter inch seam allowance. But the only other thing we need to do here before we do that is add our handles. And so I'm just gonna take one of my handle straps and then you just wanna center it. So it should end up being about, I think it's five and a quarter in from each side. So I'm just gonna do that one there and do five and a quarter here. Okay, and then it's about just under six and a half inches. So now that I have that in place, I can go ahead and layer my top panel right on top of there and just line up these horizontal edges. And I'm just gonna reuse these clips to get all three layers together, like so. Take this over to my sewing machine. I'm gonna sew down this using a quarter inch seam allowance. When I'm done with that, I'm gonna come back and add the other handle and this side in the exact same way. So here is our first handle added. And now you're just gonna push that one out of the way for a second and we're gonna add this second one here. And so I'm just gonna kind of lay it out. And by the way, you wanna just make sure that you don't have any twists in your handle here. Five and a quarter inch in. Five and a quarter inch in. And then I can go ahead and place this one on top just like I did my other one. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew this down one quarter of an inch just like I did this other side. All right, so here is our finished outer piece. And then what we're gonna want to do when we press it is just make sure that we're pressing it towards the center. And that what that will do is that will pop these handles up towards the top of our bag. So if you were to press it up towards the top, as you can see, it kind of aims the handles down. So we don't want that. We want the handles pressed up towards the top of our bag. All right, so our top is finished and I've just gone ahead and pressed it and made sure that my handles are going up towards the top of our bag. Now it's time to attach it to the foam. So I'm gonna set this to the side and I'm going to grab my lining piece here. And so here's our right side. We're gonna layer our lining piece right side down on our table. Then we're going to just sandwich this the exact same way we did our pockets. So we're going to line up the foam right on top of that. And then on top of that, we're going to layer the outside panel of our bag. So you just want all of your layers lined up perfectly. So I'm gonna fuse the outside panel first and then I'll flip it over and fuse the lining panel and make sure, just make sure everything's all nice and lined up. When I'm done doing that, I'm going to quilt it however I like. The only thing I ask you to do when you're quilting it is to not quilt over your straps. So like quilt this portion and then put your strap out of the way quilt this portion, pull your strap out of the way and quilt this portion. We're gonna sew the straps on differently so you don't want your quilting lines going across your straps. Um, and then once I'm done with that, I am going to run that stitch um, one eighth of an inch around the entire exterior edge as well, just so that I can make sure that I have all my layers secured together really well. Here is our finished quilt top. And so I just did some horizontal striping on these sides and then I did some diagonal on the bottom just for some added interest. Now we're going to go ahead and take that pocket that we made in the very beginning of the video and we're gonna add that. Now the pocket is essentially going to be in this location but on the inside of the bag. So it's gonna be hidden, the seams will be hidden by this strap. So we wanna turn our bag over. And then you're gonna want a ruler for this portion because we need to make sure it's kind of in the right location. So it's going to be from the top of the bag all the way down to the bottom here is going to be nine inches. So nine inches. And then it's gonna be five and three quarters inches in from each edge. So five and three quarters inches in from that edge, five and three quarters inches in from this edge. And then I'm just gonna double check my nine inches. That looks good. Then I'm gonna grab a couple of pins and I'm just gonna pin this in place so that it doesn't go anywhere on us. All right, now that that is pinned in place right here, this is where it's gonna get a little bit tricky. We're not gonna sew this pocket in place just yet. We're going to leave it pinned in place. So just make sure that it's 
securely pinned so it doesn't move around on you. Now we're gonna turn our bag back over to the front and then we're gonna grab our other little pockets that we created for the front. And I'm just going to center those right in between these straps. There should be about a quarter of an inch on the edge of each of the edge of your pocket. I'm just gonna lay that there and line up the raw edge of this pocket with this seam. And don't worry, that's gonna get covered up in our next step. Just make sure that your pocket is centered like so. Clip these in place so they don't move around on me. We wanna make sure they're nice and straight. And we're gonna place the other one in the same position on this other side. And you can do one of these at a time. I'm just doing it to show you for reference. And if you like, you can also stick a pin or something in here on these pockets so they don't move around on you as well. Once everything is pinned in place, we're gonna take this over to our sewing machine and I'm gonna backstitch right here and then I'm gonna sew right up this edge of this strap using a 1 8 inch seam allowance. I'm gonna sew all the way up till I get one and a half inches away from the top of the bag and I'm kind of eyeballing it, but you can just put a little pin in there so you know where your stopping point is. We're gonna sew across and then back down using 1 8 inch seam allowance and backstitch. So up the side, across, and back down. And then we're gonna do that on all four of our straps. And that's going to attach the strap. It's also gonna secure our pocket. And then when we come back, we're gonna add some cute ribbon right here. It's gonna cover up the raw edge of our pocket here and give our bag a little decorative touch. Okay, so here is what our bag is looking like so far. We've got our side edges of our pocket sewn down on the inside. The bottom edge is still open, but that's gonna get fixed in just a minute. And then if we flip it over to the front, we've got our two little pockets and our handles are nice and attached as well. So next comes the fun part. I have these fun little ribbons and you can use anything that you like. These happen to be Moda ribbons that come off of my Fat Quarter bundles. So they basically look like this. They bundle up all of their little bundles in these cute little ribbons. And so I think they're perfect to use for these projects. So I don't throw those away. So I'm going to now place that ribbon right across this seam. And these are directional, so I'm just gonna make sure that mine are going the right direction. And then I'm just gonna make sure that it's basically centered half on this top half and half on the bottom half on that seam right there. And then I'm just gonna pin that in place, take it to my sewing machine and just sew right along that edge. It's gonna secure the bottom edge of this pocket and the inside pocket at the same time. And then I'm going to sew along this bottom edge as well. And then I'm gonna repeat that process on this side of my bag. So here is our finished bag top. We've got our pockets in, and then of course we have our inside pocket. Now I did leave you a little bit of extra fabric on this pocket just to make sure that you caught it in your seams. If you don't like the way this looks, you can skip the inside pocket or you can adjust it as you need to. Um, but that should all be completed now and our uh, handles are all nice and attached. Now the next thing we're going to do is round the corners of these edges. So I'm just gonna turn this so it's a little bit easier to see and pull my handle out of the way. And then I have a template and this will be part of your download. And you're just going to line your template up along with the top of your bag and the sides of your bag. And then you're just gonna trace this curved top right on here. And I'm just using a friction erasable pin. It actually doesn't matter because it's gonna get caught in your seam. And then taking my rotary trimmer, I'm going to just cut those off. And also, by the way, if you would like to trace one side, you can, and then just flip it over and cut them both at the same time. That way, um, might make your life a little bit easier, okay? And then once you have the first one cut, you can kind of do the same thing. Line up your bag, and then again, just cut the second one. You can also use the template, it doesn't really matter. I'm just always looking for shortcuts. All right, and now we have our curved edges on our bag and we're ready to start assembling our bag. So the first thing I'm gonna do is fold it in half, right sides together, and then I'm just going to take some Wonder Clips here and just mark my centers. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna find the center of the sides. Again, fold it in half and mark the center. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. This one's a little bit just stiffer because it has that extra pocket on it. Okay, 
All right, and of course you can measure too. I just like to fold things in half and find it because it's just faster. So here are the centers of the top of my bag and the centers of the bottom. Now we're gonna take our zipper panel that we created earlier and we're gonna find the center of that one as well. So we're gonna start by the, um, finding the center of the bottom of the pockets. And so again, you can just kind of fold it in half and just find it that way. Okay, and then we're gonna fold it in half this way and also find the center of the zipper portion. Whoa. Okay. So now we've found all the centers that we need to find and we're ready to move on. Now, if you'd like to round the corners of this bag, now would be a good time to do so. And you would want to just grab something that's round. You can kind of lay it on there and just trace it. You're gonna to wanna to do that on all four corners of your outside pockets. For this project, I'm gonna leave them straight. In our previous project, we made this bag and we did round these corners and I had so many questions on if you had to round them or you could leave them square. So we're gonna leave these ones square just so you can kind of see the difference, but you're welcome to do whichever method you prefer. So now we're going to take our zipper panel and we're gonna lay it right side down or outside fabrics facing each other onto our bottom. And you're just gonna line up these centers right here and then clip those together. So I can go ahead and just use that clip Clip those together and clip those together. And then you're gonna do the same thing down here on this other edge. And again, just line those up and then you can clip them together. Okay, so now you should have something that kind of looks like this. So we've got our bottom edges secure and now we're going to line up these side edges. Now you're just gonna wanna make sure that your handle straps are down inside if you would like. You can even tuck them into this pocket just to kind of keep them out of the way, whatever's easiest. But you're just gonna lift that side edge up and just line them up with your center clip over here. And then just go ahead and kind of clip those edges together. It's just gonna keep everything nice and centered. Okay, and then we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Put my strap out of the way, and then again, pull it up, and just line up these centers, and then just start clipping. All right, so this is basically what we should be having now, and now you just need to clip all the way around both raw edges. And by the way, it's nice if you have your zipper pulled open, that way we can turn our bag right side out. <laughs> now one thing that might help you get around these kind of curved edges is if you just clip into them a little bit and you can just take your scissors and just kind of clip in just less than like a quarter of an inch. And that'll kind of help this fabric bend around those corners. Um, this is a pretty gentle curve, so you may not even find that you need to do that. And just make sure that you are getting all of those layers in nice and secure. And then when you get down to this corner, you can just kind of tuck that corner in right there. And clip it in place. And you're just gonna wanna repeat that process all the way around the bag. Okay, so this is basically what one side of your bag looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and finish clipping the other side of the bag and I'll meet you back at the sewing machine. So now I'm going to just sew right along this bag using about a half an inch seam allowance or a three eighths of an inch, somewhere in there. I just wanna make sure that I get all of my layers sewn together. And when I get down here to my first corner, I'm going to remove this clip and sew as close to the corner as I can, leave my needle in my down position, lift my presser foot, and I'm actually going to kind of pivot my bag up so now it's actually kind of more at a 90 degree angle. I can lower my presser foot, remove these clips, and just keep sewing. And you're just gonna to want to make sure that you're getting all those edges in. All right, so here's what our bag should be looking like. We've gotten all of our edges sewn together. Everything looks nice. And now we just need to add binding all the way around this inside edge and we'll be done with our bag. But before I do that, I do like to just turn my bag right side out and just check all of these seam lines that I just sewed. That way I can make sure that I have all of my fabric in there. When you're doing this many layers, it's really easy to get some fabric poking out. So I'm gonna go ahead and check all of my seams really fast and then I'll meet you right back here and I'll show you how to add the binding to our bag. 
All right, so I've checked all of my edges and now I'm going to go ahead and add a binding to the middle. Now I've created bias binding and I showed you exactly how to do it in the last tutorial. So I'll link that here because um, I don't think that we need to do it twice, but basically you want bias binding because as you can see right here, it's nice and stretchy and it's gonna go around these curves a lot easier than if you had cut your bias on the grain. If you cut it on the grain, it doesn't stretch hardly at all, but if you cut it on the bias, it's nice and stretchy. So that's what we're gonna use. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start on one of the sides probably here of my bag, I think that's gonna be the easiest. And I'm just going to lay my piece down here, right sides together, wrong sides up. And I'm just gonna put a little clip there to hold it in place for now. I'm gonna take this first corner here and I'm just gonna fold it down so that it's in a triangle. So let's do that again, only up close. So I've got my binding right sides down on my bag here. And I'm just gonna take this corner and just fold it down so that you create this little triangle right here. And then I'm gonna clip that in place. And I just have the rest of my binding kind of hanging off to the side here. And I'm just gonna take this over to my machine and we're gonna sew attaching it all the way around the bag and you'll end up coming right back here and I'll meet you right back here when we get back to this starting point. All right, so we're coming back up to our starting point here. And so what we're gonna do is just place our binding right over that starting point. And we're gonna sew past that by, I would say a couple of an inches or so. And then when we flip this over, we'll have a nice finished seam right here on our binding. We didn't have to do any um, joining or anything like that. And then we can just take our scissors and we can just cut this off and set that aside for another project. And then now it's gonna be super easy when we flip our binding over to the other side, as you can see, we have a nice mitered finished edge right there and we didn't have to do any complicated measuring or anything like that. So the next thing we're gonna do is just go ahead and do that all the way around, just flip our binding over the edge here. And if you need to, if you have fabric cutting, um, popping out on these corners, just snip off any of that extra fabric. That'll just make getting around those corners with this binding a little bit easier. And then I like to start where this little complicated piece is, that way I know I make sure to get that in properly. And how we're gonna do that is we're just going to fold our binding over so that it is towards our raw edges here, and then just fold it over again, and just pin that in place. And then we're going to just do that all the way around this bag. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish clipping all of my binding down and then I'll take it over to my sewing machine and just sew right along that edge to attach the binding to the other side. We'll hide all of our raw edges in here and it'll also actually give our bag a little bit of structure to help hold it up and keep it in shape. And then we just need to add our strap and we'll be done. So now we're ready to prepare our crossbody strap. And so this is pretty easy, but you just have to pay attention so you get it, um, everything assembled the correct direction. So we're just gonna take one of the ends and place one of our clips on here, our little, claws or whatever they're called. Okay, so you're gonna have it like that. And then you're gonna take this adjustable piece here and I have it right side up. The wrong side has the metal kind of folded over. So you want it right side up and you want this not twisted. And then you're gonna go up through the top and out through the bottom of that. And then just fold this over by about um, like an inch or so. And then you can just stitch maybe a little square with an X in here just to keep that in place. Okay, so here's what it looks like. We've got our end secured and we've got one of our clips on. And then without twisting it, I'm gonna make sure there's no twists, we're going to take our other end, our loose end, and place it through the top and then back down through the other side like this. So you should have something that looks like this and you can just slide that all the way to the other end. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna grab the other end here and place our other clip on that. And we're gonna fold it over and do the same thing. You're just going to stitch a square with an X in it just to secure that. And now because this edge is a little bit more frayed and this one's kind of protected, I actually do like to fold this edge in by just about an inch and then overlap it like that. And then that way when I sew around here, this edge is nice and protected in there and we're not gonna have a bunch of fraying. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew my little X with a box around it and then we can attach our strap to our bag. And then you can also just take a look at this before you sew this one on. Make sure it's all nice and straight and when you come together that the top edge is facing up along with the top edge of your buckle here.
All right, guys, that is it. As you can see, this project was super fun and I would love to see your renditions of it. So if you do make this project, make sure to tag me on social media using Quilty Weekend Tote Bag. Hashtag Quilty Weekend Tote Bag. Is that too many? I think that's fine. Um, and then that way I can see the projects that you make as well. Now, if you're curious, this fabric that I'm using today is something I've kind of been storing in my stash back here for a while. And I've made a commitment to sort of sew through my stash whenever I can. So this is a Lake House Dry Goods, I think is what it's called, um, fabric. And I think this one on the bottom is a Lori Holt Gingham. Again, these are all fabrics that came from my stash. So I don't know if you can still find them, but you definitely can check them um, online. And I'll put that information in the description box below the video with all of the other info in there. So that's it for today's tutorial. I hope that you enjoyed it. So thank you so much for joining me for today's video. If you liked it, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe. That way I know to keep making fun videos for you. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.